What is up YouTube? My name is Shane Saxon aka Wonder Bread Plus and today we're talking about originality. Woo! Shane, you pick the coolest of topic! Oh stop it you, you're gonna make me blush. Everyone starts off thinking they have to be original in the creative field, but that's just simply not the case. Yes, you are and you're a special little snowflake, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. It is infinitely harder for your work to be original. And that's not everything, that's not something that everybody should strive for anyways. Let me explain, because I can feel people typing away already. It is much more valuable to focus on having solid fundamentals and creating a good piece of design, rather than sacrificing some of that to create a unique design. Clients are more likely to put their money into something that is reassuring and something that they're confident is going to come out good rather than risking their good money on something that can be unique. I used to focus on being original way before I even knew what design was. I didn't get introduced to design, my love and passion and career, until my victory lap of high school when a, my art teacher introduced me to a book about design and then I fell in love and went into a program for it. In those high school years is where I sunk all of my heart and my energy into doing drawing and fine art and that's where my problem with originality and uniqueness began. I wanted to achieve my own style so badly that I was willing to sacrifice doing all of the practice of proportions and fundamentals and basics of design and art that I just, I jumped ahead and I was watching speed arts of people on YouTube and how they had their own style that was distinctly theirs and I wanted that. The problem with that is I was never able to create work that I was happy with or anything that I was proud of because I didn't take the time to practice the fundamentals and therefore I couldn't make good art, let alone achieving style on top of that and making great art. I was too focused on this journey and skipping ahead to achieve my own style. The answer was really simple in retrospect. All I had to do was take that time that I was frustrated trying to create my own style and put that into practicing and that way I could have achieved my goal instead of just replicating projects that weren't even mine. I do still struggle with this right now currently where I am as a designer. I am too busy looking at the people that are at the top of their game, whether that's design or making video content, whatever it may be, whatever creative venture I'm on, I tend to focus on the leaders of that area and I want to be that, I want to achieve that. I just want to skip all of the work and go right to that. Don't get me wrong, when I say that I was trying to be those people or trying to achieve that status, I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at the work of people who are excelling in your field and replicating that, but as long as that's not only what you're doing. You have to take the time to put in the practice and make work yourself and not just make work that replicates the people that are above you. Even working with clients today, if I get stuck on a concept, then I go to websites like Behance, Creative Market, Pinterest, anywhere that I can gather information or people who've done work similar or under a similar topic to this, I go there and I look at other people's work. The key thing is that I'm not taking someone's work and just putting my own information in there. I take a piece from this project, I take a piece from that project on different websites until I can create this like Frankenstein-like monster of an idea that I want and then I start playing with it and seeing how it can work with the stuff that I have. However, there is a catch. This only works when you are looking at someone else's project or product and you are analyzing the strengths. It does not work if you strictly copy. You have to look at their project or their product or whatever it may be and you have to think, why is that working? Break it down, pick apart the strengths of it and apply that to your project. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot blatantly copy someone's work. That is plagiarism. You have no right to do that. You are a special kind of terrible person and you deserve to never ever cuddle a dog ever again, or pet. Can't even say hi, can't even look at a dog. Yeah, I went, I went there. There is no, there is no worse punishment. Originality is not the end all be all of your work. I think originality only really comes after mastery or if you have confidence in your work. I'll make a video about that at another point. I'm still trying to work on that a little bit. For right now, focus on creating good, reliable work with a strong foundation. And then you can start putting your own spin on it. Who knows, during this journey, you might even find yourself putting a little spin on everything along the way. And of course, most of all, have fun doing it. It's no, there's no point in doing it and testing yourself if you're not gonna have fun in the journey. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. But I mean, like, it's, it, dude, it's, it's cool if you're, if you're busy or whatever. You don't, you don't gotta, don't wanna tie you down. 
Anyways, this has been what was on my mind this week. My name is Shane Saxon, aka Miracle Whip, and feel free to check out one of my other videos, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See, who needs originality when you can do stereotypical YouTube outros? We're gonna be talking about. Or no, I skipped my name. What up, YouTube? YouTube. What is up, YouTube? YouTube.